Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Welcome everybody to another episode of Boss Talks. And if this is your first time, like I just said, welcome. And I really appreciate you joining us. The reason why we do Boss Talks is because Christine and I have got a common goal to help people and families become the boss of their lives. Like really to just to, to get rid of the, the programming that you can only just live your life getting by. And you have to follow all the systems. You have to do as you're told and be a good little, little uh, person, good little human being and just etch out a little meager existence. We want you to have big lives. We want you to travel the world. We want you to spend time with your loved ones. We want, and we want to show you how to do it. So all this comes at a cost though. And the fee we charge is just that you share it. If you find this valuable, just share it. Like drop, like we're on all the, all the regular social media networks. You can find us on all the podcasts uh, like Apple, iTunes. You can find us on YouTube. We're world famous. Just reach out and just say, hey, I thought of you, this one, uh, where Joel and Christina uh, are tearing the world a new one, really, really made me think of you and share it to someone and just brighten their day. And if, that, if that, you can do that, you've paid the fee. So, Christine, how are you today? We are miles apart now, but through the magic of technology, we're on this podcast together. So what have you been up to? Oh, mate, I've, I've, uh, you know what? I've been back a week from America and life has been so blissful, so, such a beautiful, chaotic mess, um, but life is, is incredible. And I'm, I think this is going to be our most controversial um, podcast ever, actually. I'm really fired up about this one. But I've got a question for you, Joel. Are you the boss of your household? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Let's be honest. Well, I'd have to say, yeah, I probably am in, in this case, yeah. Like, <laughs> it depends what part. Like we, we sort of have our own little uh, departments. Like, I, like in our family, I take care of the, the finance and, and Vicky takes care of making sure we've got amazing nutrition and both are equally important. So we kind of feed off each other. After 18 years of marriage, we've sort of got into our groove uh, you know, Vicky can handle uh, some of the, uh, probably does more of the, the, the kids dropping off to school, even though I get to the choice to do that whenever I, whenever I uh, can. Uh, and yeah, but yeah, we sort of just work together. It's in, we've got a really good synergy after all this time. So yeah. You've got a boss family. We have the a whole boss family's family. boss. That, that, is, <laughs> that is the goal. Like I want my kids to be bosses. And not, not like the entre- like not the uh, employee mindset boss where you, like they're sitting on the top of a pyramid away from everyone and just barking orders. I'm talking about conscious human beings that want to make a difference, that want to treat each other and women and other people and other races like decently. You know, the stuff that just being conscious human beings. So that's my mission. Uh, I, I know that if, if nothing else, if, I, if everything goes to shit for me, if I've done that, I've won. Yeah, and I think this is why we're so well aligned because my whole mission is to raise the consciousness of mums and really help them step into their power so they can, you know, really shape the generations to follow. So, you know, we're really passionate about parenting. We're also passionate about being good human beings and, you know, really getting people to vibrate at that higher level. So today's podcast, I'm excited about this one. This one's all about unsupportive partners. So, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and you have an unsupportive partner, or if you're listening to this podcast and you are the unsupportive partner, you're probably about to get your ass kicked. <laughs> um, this is something that we don't take lightly. Uh, I, this, like, I really feel like if you are being an unsupportive partner, you're actually dimming the light of your partner. You're actually allowing them to play small in life. And you're not fun to be around if you are the unsupportive partner. So I'd love you to check in. Check in with your, with your relationships. If you don't have a partner, what are you, how are you turning up as a human being? Are you closed-minded? Do you support your friends and family? What traditions and experiences are you creating in your life 
that shows that you are supportive no matter what, you know. And, um, you know, I know this is close to your heart as well, Joel. What would you love to share um, in regards to this topic? Uh, absolutely. Look, straight out uh, from the man's perspective, uh, being in the industry that I, that I frequent a lot, I'm in the, in the network marketing industry, and there are some powerful, powerful women in that. Now, if you're, a, um, if you're an immature masculine man and, that, and that's what you are, if that intimidates you, then it's just a, it's a signpost to grow, you know, and, and I'm not just talking about women in business. I'm like there's like unsupportive partners in when, they, when their wives want to grow themselves, like they could be like doing personal development. They could be doing a business. They could have friends. Now, there is the flip side I'll quickly touch on. If... I don't believe you have to support your wife if she wants to go out and gamble all your money or do something like that. Or if your husband wants to uh, come on. do something crazy <laughs> like that. But if, you, if it's a stretch for you to um, support your wife, uh, and once again, coming from the man's perspective, to go and grow themselves, to go around and be around more powerful women that have, you know, and, and to find themselves and step into their power, like you're crazy you really need to check yourself. And like, I really think that is really showing that you're probably a little boy who's afraid that once their wife grows, that you aren't good enough to keep them. And that, that's Ouch. like, yeah, that, that, that's it. You, so you would use your, all the tools and tricks that you can to hold them down. You'll, you'll like basically shit all over what they're doing. And that's not helping anyone. Like, think about what you're doing because you're actually hurting yourself. Don't you want your wife to be the best version of herself? Wouldn't you like her to find a way to bring more money into uh, the household? Wouldn't you want your wife to be able to be a better mother? And that all comes from allow, like allow is a really uh, touchy word there, but like having the courage to like accept that, hey, yeah, your wife might grow and leave you. But if you love her enough, you've got to be willing to take that risk. And like, I know when a really powerful coach was working with my wife, he said, like, I just want to prepare you that she's going to grow and there might be a future timeline where you're not in it. And I was like, I'm prepared to take that risk because I, first and foremost, I want her to be happy. And if that's not with me, then, then it's not with me. That's not her problem. That's my problem. And I was willing to take it. So like um, that really gave my wife, Vicky, the, the space that she needed to, to find, her, find her path and, and grow. And she's grown massively over the last, uh, last four to five years. Uh, you wouldn't even know her. She doesn't even know herself. And, and she's kept uh, you around. She's kept me around. Like <laughs> I don't know what that says about her. <laughs> I don't know what that says about her. Like it could, she might be blind or something. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, Mate, I, like honestly, I just really, I, and sorry to cut you off, but I just really want to say what a mature approach and a, and a mature way to look at it, you know. Um, I really feel like, you know, talking from the guy's perspective, there's some guys out there and, and they're doing what I call lazy living. They're just going through the motions. They're not prepared to grow. They're not prepared to work on themselves. They go to the nine to five grind or sometimes it's six to six. You know, they're working their asses off and we respect you for that and we thank you for that, for the job that you're doing. We know that you're the hunter and gatherers. We know that you, you, it makes you feel masculine to have to go out there and provide for the family. We know that you take that role very seriously and we are grateful for you for doing that. However, you by, by, you, by you playing small as well and you not fulfilling your dreams and you not raising your level of consciousness and raising your vibration, that affects the whole energy of the household. That affects your partner's energy. That affects your children's energy. And what kind of example are you setting if, if that's what you're teaching the kids, that, that that is how they have to live their life? You know, to go and work for someone else, you know, for the next 40, 50, 60 years, however long, and then hopefully at the end of it, you know, you've got a bit of life left in you to do the things that you love. But most of the time, we're too exhausted or we're too, our bro bones and our bodies are too broken to be able to then experience life the way that we want it. So wouldn't you love to just go, you know what? I don't want to be, I don't want to live um, life being a lazy, you know, I want to be out there. I want to show my, my kids what it looks like to live a fulfilling life. I want to show my kids how you can 
um, you know, fulfill your dreams, your partner's dreams, your dreams as a family. What kind of what kind of family do you want to create as well? Like, do you want to be a great family where you all support each other, where you have traditions, where you celebrate each other, where you instill in your kids that it's okay to follow your passions and your purpose? I think that on the world and how they see it. So, what's to say that? you know, our partner's dreams or goals are wrong just because they don't align with our values and our belief system and our, our perceptions. So from the female perspective, if you have a partner that's unsupportive, you need to ask the question, is that how you want to spend the next 20, 30, 40 years of your life with someone who doesn't support your dreams? Now, they don't have to agree with what you're doing. Um, and as Joel said, as long as you're not out there gambling the family money and you're not out there doing ridiculous, crazy, you know, life-threatening things, um, but if, it, if it's something, you know, a business idea or maybe you have a hobby, a side hobby that brings you joy and happiness and allows you to re release stress and tension in your life, isn't that something that you would just love to have that support from a supportive spouse, from someone who, you know, loves and respects you? Don't you want to show your kids what it means to just switch off and be able to do things that bring more joy into your life ra rather than just hitting the grindstone every single day? Like for me, that's what it's all about. It's about creating experiences, not, not bad experiences, but joyful experiences, experiences that set your soul on fire, you know, that really allow you to step into the person that you want to be, not living someone else's life, not dimming your light because someone else doesn't agree with the dreams that, you know, that you're taking on. Not everyone's going to capture your vision and that's okay. They don't have to. As long as you know where you're going and what you want to achieve and the impact and the legacy that you want to leave, that's all that matters. You know, I'm so passionate about raising the consciousness of mums and really getting them to raise the gentlemen and the powerhouse women of the next generation and the generations to follow. That's my passion. Now, not all of you are going to be passionate about that. You're not going to buy into my vision. But some of you out there know what I'm talking about. You can feel this. It's in line with your values and your spirit. So you're going to support me. And that's all I ask. Whether you support it or not, whether it's in line with your values or not, just support people where they're at. Support their dreams and hopes because you know what? There's this stupid thing here in Australia called the tall, tall poppy syndrome. And as soon as people start getting a little bit of success, what do we do? We try and find something wrong with them. We try and dig up all this garbage from their past to make that person look bad. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it and I'm sick of people being um, having to pay over and over again for mistakes that they've paid in the past. Especially, You see it all the time with athletes. You know, what about the cricketers that tampered that cricket ball? Big deal. We've all cheated. We've all done something wrong that we've regretted in our life. Why do they have to keep paying over and over and over again for these mistakes? It's the same in your relationships. Are you, the, are you someone who is supporting your spouse? When was the last time you celebrated your spouse, your partner? When was the last time you raised them up? When was the last time you let them know how much you are grateful for the things that they're doing? It doesn't have to be big. Just the small things. The things that matter. That's what it's all about. So that's that's my little rant over, Joel. <laughs> wow, you like you hit the nail on the head. And actually, uh, Nathan and I, in your absence, did a whole episode on tall poppy syndrome. Uh, so if anyone wow. wants, to, wants to hear that one, it's um it's killer. <laughs> and uh, the gloves come off on that one too. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think that. I think that'll be a race for the most controversial one that, I've, that we've done against this one. But look, guys, let's say, let's say you are right and your partner's dreams are like don't work out or what they're wanting to do, that what they're, what, what they're wanting your support on doesn't work out. You, you owe them the gift of finding out for themselves. You don't need to sit there and, and like, like I said, trash their dreams when they're going after because going after that dream might lead to the next one and going after the next one might lead them to their calling and their calling could be you just don't know what you just people have unlimited potential you don't know it could be a cure for cancer it could be some something hugely amazing that they've got inside them they could be the next i don't know like superstar singer or superstar they might find a gift in their heart that they didn't even know they had and yeah sure their next one like what they're going after now might seem crazy to you but like you know it could lead to something else and honestly 
at everyone that's done anything of worth like has been called crazy in the in the beginning you know what i mean like i'm sure uh the a lot of the women at the most powerful uh women in network marketing that you went in uh, over to see were called crazy like i'm sure bill gates was called crazy when he said he wanted to have a computer in everyone's house I'm sure, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was called crazy. So, you know, you know, they, not everyone has that thick skin and especially your partner. If they're like, like Christine, like share some stories. I'm sure you have heaps um, about women that have been at home and they get into mum mode and they become isolated and they lose their voice and they need help to find their dreams. And then if you, got, if you stack an unsupportive partner on top of that, you can really, really be crushed, right? Absolutely. And you can feel it, it. Honestly, every time that your partner is unsupportive, it crushes a little bit of your spirit. It really does. You start to feel down. You start to feel um, unworthy. You start to feel really lost. You lose direction. You start being less social. It starts to lead to depression and anxiety. Um, and just, let, just going back to the most powerful women in network marketing, you know why I love this profession? There was women up there on the millionaires panel and there was women up there that had been in jail before. Now, if you go for a job and you've been in jail before, what do you think your chances are of getting a job? Unlikely. You are so judged out there in the nine to five world, in the corporate world. There was another lady there that grew up with her mum being a drug dealer. Then as a teenager, she got into drug dealing. Then she um, fell into like a really bad part of her life where she had three kids to three different men and she's sitting up there and she's earned $15 million in the last five years in the network marketing profession. Where else can someone with a background like that go out in the workforce and create that kind of income but also make that kind of impact? That's the beauty of this amazing profession and as Joel said, there's some powerhouse women that are rising in this profession because it has more millionaire women in it than any other profession in the world. And if you are a man that can't handle a powerful woman, then you need to go and find someone meek. You need to go and find someone else. Don't hold your partner back. And as Joel said, are you prepared to lose your partner in order for her to be happy, in order for you to be happy? You know, this is what it's all about, guys. Why do we stay content? Why do we live with people that are not bringing us joy? Why do we live with people that are not supporting us in our dreams and our passions? 98% of people die without fulfilling their dreams. Which side of the line are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the 98% or are you going to be in the 2% of people that are out there in the arena getting their ass kicked every day or are you going to be on the grandstand watching, judging, pointing fingers and holding people down? The choice is yours. But here for, for me, and Joel, this is, this is exactly right. I see so many women out there who, um, who are not being supported by their partners, who are losing themselves, who are not living in their, in, within their values. They're letting go of that fun-loving girl that they used to be. They stop doing things that bring them joy in their life. And for me to see people that I love and care about go through that, and to see strangers that I, I can see so much potential in go through that, like, what is the world coming to? Honestly, we need to start asking ourselves better questions. And if you're in that situation and you have a daughter, what would you tell your daughter do, to do in that situation? If, she, if your daughter grows up and she's in the situation with a husband that is being a lazy liver, that is not supportive, that is maybe mentally abusing, physically abusing, sexually abusing or uh, financially abusing, we all know people that are going through that. If that was your daughter, what advice would you give her? And then go and look in the mirror because maybe you need to take some of your own advice. And I know this is controversial and I'm not, I know I'm going to stir up some feathers with this and I know my life is not perfect. You know, I used to be married and I got out of it because I started to be content. I wasn't happy. I was plain small and, um, you know, I decided to, leave that relationship because I wanted more for my life. I wanted to grow. I wanted to expand. I wanted to evolve. I didn't want to live a content life. I know that I'm on this earth to um, live an extraordinary life. I know I'm here to make an impact. And I know each and every one of you is here to make an impact. We all have different levels of greatness. We all have different skills, different abilities that we bring to the table. 
what you guys can create out there is totally different to what I can create. But some of you aren't even scratching the surface of your potential. You're not even having a crack. You're letting other people steal your light. You're letting other people squash you down and absolutely crush your spirit. And we're here to wake you up today and really shake you up and get you to ask yourself better questions. How much longer are you going to put up with an unsupportive partner? And if you're the unsupportive partner, how much longer are you going to live your life in this frustrated, negative way that is causing you a lot of stress and probably a lot of disease and illness and inflammation in your body as well? You know, I'm doing an experiment at the moment, Joel, with the kids. It's the rice experiment. I don't know if the listeners have heard of it, but it's all about you have two bottles of rice and on one you put, I love you, you're beautiful, and every day you're, you're telling this, this jar of rice how amazing it is and um, you raise it up. And then the other jar of rice you write on, I hate you, you're ugly, and you just every day you're telling this other jar of rice how um, disgusting it is and, and you, you're putting all this negative energy on it. And guess what? At the end of the 30 days, the, the positive rice is still white and the negative rice turns black. That's what your negativity and your unsupportive talk is doing to your spouse. You are slowly killing the cells in your spouse's body, in your kid's body, when you are unsupportive, when you're negative, when you're emotionally manipulating people, when you are squashing people's dreams and hopes. Now, do you want to allow people to shine and grow like that, that rice or do you want to start killing them and making their insides turn black and um, destroy their spirit? That's the question I'm asking you guys today. Absolutely. I've actually seen that experiment uh, at a university and they did it with plants. They had two plants in the same spot, exactly like I think they might have even cloned the plant. I think it might have been exactly the same plant. And it works. After 30 days of exactly what you said, the, the um, plant that had all the hay put on it was dead and withered and shitty and the other one was like thriving. And so funny i'm reading this book where they've actually got scientific equipment that can actually uh measure the light that comes out like of of what you're doing the energy you're putting out like uh it's it's new stuff but like i'm like wow it's like there's there's a, there's a revolution of positivity coming in i actually was a little bit triggered when you were saying that because i've um i actually couldn't see myself saying nasty things even to, a, to rice now i was like well I'd, I'd actually find it challenging to throw out bad energy like that that'd be like against my zen at the moment like i don't know you know what and it does you feel really horrible you can feel it in your body when you're abusing this rice it's horrible and watching the kids do it as well is horrible it just yeah. it, it does it brings the whole energy down so we make sure we do the bad one first and then we pick it up with the good rice sensational yeah i wonder how much uh, rice is going bad in people's cupboards around the world just because of that energy. Yeah, that's sensational. Well, hey, we're all good about getting on our soapbox, but how about we give some tips on, on what, we, what we think could be great steps to help people move on from this and, and get around this if this is happening in their life. And maybe you could share some stories because I know you've helped a lot more people than I have with this. And sort of like I know there's probably a pretty stark warning because I've heard one, a couple of your stories about what happens if you um, remain unsupportive for long enough and your wife grows <laughs> or, your, or your husband grows. So, look, <clears throat> ladies, gentlemen, you've got to take responsibility. You have to take responsibility. It's not – fair enough. The cards you've been dealt, you've got what is, in your perspective, an unsupportive uh, partner. Now – I want to flip that for a second because you don't know what they're going through. And it's, you know, no matter how thinly you slice it, there's always two sides to a story. Now, you need to be able to sell your partner on your dream. So the fact is that they might just not understand what, you, what it is you're going on about. And they might be feeling left out, you know, and that's natural. That you might be spending so much time looking at your dreams or looking at your personal or with your new friends or your hobby or whatever that happens to be. And they're starting to feel like they're not enough. Now, that's just natural. And maybe they don't have the skills and tools because they haven't listened to our podcast enough to actually uh, to get through that themselves. So they might need some help too. They might just want an invitation to come with you on the journey. You just don't know. But help them make them, help them understand what it is you're going through. Now, if you do that and that doesn't work, then 
maybe down the track, it, it might be time to leave. <laughs> but before you go doing something drastic, why not like understand that love isn't something that you, that you get, it's something that you give. When you're in a relationship, it's not 50-50, it's 100-100. You can only put in 100. It's, so don't think of it like a transaction. Don't think of it like a credit card. Hey, I did this, so they should do that. That's just death to a relationship. I really, really, really want that to sink in. Because if you're treating your relationship with the entrepreneur's mind where it's like uh, fair is fair, win, win, and you start giving things meaning that they don't, just don't have, then, wow, you're, you're, already, you're already in trouble. So what I suggest you do for at least 90 days is go back and work out how to be the perfect partner, the best you can be. Give, give, give. You know, treat them like it's the honeymoon. Treat them like, you know, you first met, you know, like ignore the clothes in the laundry, on the, in the bathroom, do all that, pick it up, do everything you can. Because in the beginning, you would do that. You chose them at a level that you would, that you would do anything for them. You know, you know like, like blokes, when you're chasing women, you'll put their garbage out at their house. <laughs> but when you move in with them and you're married with them long enough, you're like, oh my God, why can't you do it? Or, you know, like it's, it's all that. So like go back to basics, go back to the start and treat your partner. And, and look, here's the, here's, the, here's the clincher, right? If you do that for 90 days, and they still aren't coming to the party, well, at least you're going to be the most amazing partner for the next person. <laughs> I Pretty love that. Um, but it, it's the reality because, honestly, you've got one life uh, and, and we're not getting any younger. Every day we're getting closer to, to our, our destiny. And why waste it on someone who's holding you down? Like, and we're talking extreme cases here, like, most cases, like better communication is going to solve it. But in the cases that aren't, like, and Christine can share some of those, uh, like I'm, I'm sure, uh, if you're comfortable, of course, uh, like you've got, to, you've got to consider leaving, you know, and that, that's tough in its own. But like, honestly, your kids are watching you and no matter how many times you tell them to do something, they're going to do what you do, not what you say. So... Yeah, I don't know, Christine. What do you reckon? Was that was that harsh enough, or should I go harder? Or oh, it was it was a it was a velvet hammer. I reckon it was soft, but it was <laughs> it was a truth bomb. But it's so true. Like, how many of us hang hang with these partners, and then in our sixties we decide to leave them? We think, shit, I should have bloody left them 20, 30 years ago when I had the chance. But what we try and do is we try and change people. You want to be with someone that you don't need to change. But here's the thing about relationships, guys. You need radical communication. If you're not having radical con communication with your partner about everything, then of course there's going to be strain and conflict. You, you're expecting your partner to be able to think what's going on in your mind. And that's just crazy. They're never going to be able to know exactly what's going on. You're only going to know if you ask questions and if you share what your passions and your dreams are. And this is, I know I'm speaking from experience here because this, this is something that changed Tom and I like I had to have radical communication with him to share exactly why I love doing what I do and what my biggest fears were now my biggest fear was not failing my biggest fear was being so successful that I would outgrow him and put um, stress on the family household because I love the way that our family functions and I thought the more successful I got it meant that our family was just going to fall apart but guess what? As I'm growing, the family's growing and we just keep moving to the next level. It's like if you picture Mount Everest and you go to the first base camp, you know, and then you grow a little bit and you hit that second base camp. But sometimes you come back a bit, you, re you revert back, but then you grow a little bit more, you go a little bit more and then you start getting up the summit a little bit more. Sometimes you come back. Now you have to realize that that's what life is like. That's what relationships are like. And everything in humanity happens in duality. You can't have good without bad. You can't have love without hate. So you're going to repel your spouse sometimes. And that's okay. There's going to be this push, pull, push, pull. Sometimes you're going to push them away. Sometimes you're going to pull them towards you. That's relationships. They're never going to be perfect. So you need to, and something that really helped us was learning the love languages. And there's a book out there called The Five Love Languages. If you Google it, there's an incredible um, um, questionnaire on, 
on the website that you can actually work out what your love language is and get your partner to do it and work out what their love language is as well. Now, for me, my love language is small acts of service and physical touch. Now, small acts of service is hanging the washing out, helping men that I have an independent person <laughs> that I don't have to do everything in the household. That, to me, is amazing. Um, Tom's um, love language is quality time. Now, he loves to watch Netflix series and all things like that. So I'm not a big TV watcher, but because that's his love language, I, I will sit down with him and watch, you know, TV with him because that's important to him. That's how he um, loves to spend quality time. Another thing that we incorporate too, which, um, you know, Celine Egan, one of my mentors, is really big on this. She said, Christine, you've got to have date nights in there. You know, you've got to go out without the kids. Don't talk about work. Don't talk about the kids. Just go out and have some fun. So every now and then, Tom and I, we, we try and do it at least once a month. We'll go out and we'll have like cocktails. We'll go dancing. We'll pretend we don't even have kids. And we'll go out for a nice dinner and we'll actually treat ourselves. And that sometimes we'll have a date night in where we'll play Mario Kart or um, we'll have a movie night or something like that. So these are all tips and tricks, um, like Joel was saying, like over the next 90 days that you can incorporate that's going to allow you to be a better partner. And also celebrating them. When was the last time you left a little love note somewhere or, um, you know, you sent them a text message in the middle of the day just letting them know how grateful you are for them? When was the last time that you decided to raise them up? You can raise them up on social media or, you know, um, something that I did was I sent my mother-in-law a card to say how grateful I am for her but also for the, the way that she raised her son and how much of an incredible father he is to my kids. Now, do you think... Tom's mum loved receiving a letter like that, knowing that she's done an amazing job with her son? Of course she would have. So these are little things that you can do in order to celebrate and it makes you feel good, it makes that other person feel good and you're going to have a more enriched relationship as well. Um, the other thing too is if you've got an unsupportive partner, ask them, what are their fears? I, I've, I've had this with some people, some friends in my life that I've helped coach and it's because the, the partner has a fear and sometimes the fear is that the female will outgrow the male and she'll leave him, okay? But what's the alternative, guys? You don't support them. You live in that fear. You hold them down and they're going to leave you anyway because you're not the person that they married. You're not the person um, that you were in the beginning, you know? So um, also control. If you're a controlling person, I love to control things, but sometimes, guys, we've got to let it go. Seriously, we can't control everything out there. So if you're someone that loves to control your partner, loves to control the kids, loves to try and control life, you're going to be disappointed every time. Your expectations are never going to be met and you're going to live a life of misery, misery and suffering. And do you want to pass that on to your kids? No. So hopefully we're giving you lots of love and tips and um, support here today that is going to give you the tools and techniques to be able to implement them into your life. And I just want to finish on this note, Joel. How you treat yourself is how other people will treat you. What you tolerate is what you'll get. So if, you're, if you don't tolerate the unsupportive partner, if you don't tolerate the negative talk, if you don't tolerate the way that you're being treated because you're treating yourself with respect and dignity, then other people are not going to treat you like that as well. So make sure that you are absolutely treating yourself the way that you want to be treated and make it clear lines of communication. Tom knows that he, if he speaks to me in a certain way, he'd be out that door. So he knows to treat me with the love and respect and dignity that I deserve as a human being and in a way that lifts my spirits every single day. And that's the gift that I want to give our listeners today, Joel. Absolutely. That, that, that was amazing. I love those tips. And I guess just like sharing a story because one of the most powerful women out there is Elena Cardone. And she was on the 10 X stage and she's really big about building empires. And obviously you're building them with your, with your spouse. And what she said was like, so Grant's a successful guy, right? And there's lots of women that like to send him pictures. <laughs> it's usually what you hear about women getting, but he gets them right. And they just pop up on the screen. Now I want to like, I want to challenge these, like the, the female listeners here. If your husband was getting a photo like that sent to him because he was so successful, like, how would you respond to that? 
like he's got no control over that coming in because he's got such a like a massive reach he's such an influencer like how would you how would you respond to that so in the beginning like she was like like obviously it, it hits a, it hits a bit hard but then she goes wow um grant you're so successful you must be so successful you must be so proud that those uh, women are sending that to you um let's both sit down and have a look at that oh wow like she must really work out you must be extra good because you're getting someone that good looking sending it, sent that to you. She goes, that's actually inspired me to do like, instead of a set of 10, I'm going to do a set of 12 at the gym uh, to make sure that I'm up to standard. Now um, let's have one more look before we block her forever. And that's how she handles it. She doesn't give, I love it. She doesn't give shit meaning that doesn't have a meaning. And I think that's where so many relationships go wrong. You start giving things meaning that don't have any meaning. You know, pick your, pick your battles. Like, like Elena showed, shared another story. Like Grant used to like going over, like when they were first married, they, he used to like going over to his brother's house who lived down the road and, and like playing Xbox. Grant can't own playing Xbox, okay? Yeah, you can imagine that. Because <laughs> anyway, this is like before he took off, he was wealthy and all that sort of stuff. But they were newly wed and she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're not giving that up. I can't believe you're not giving that up. Oh my God, I've given up my shooting. I've given up going out... She used to go shooting. It's a male industry, a male sort of sport. She'd be out for weekends shooting with the boys and she gave that because she got married. And she's like, I can't believe I've given up so much for him and he's not giving that up for me. Until it dawned on her that he never once asked her to give up those weekends. In fact, he supported her to go on those weekends. And when she accepted that and she went on those weekends, she found she filled herself up with more joy because she's doing what she loved. See the tie-in, like, let, like allowing, not allowing again, I'm saying the wrong word, but like supporting your partner to do what they love, filled her up and she came back even more happy and then she's got this energy that uh, like, makes him want to be around more and see how it stacks. Like, I hope that made sense, guys. I really hope that last week made sense. Like, like I keep saying the word allow, but support your partner to go do what lights them up and they're going to come back happier and then the house is happier. I want to tie something into that that you just said. You just reminded me of something that Mitch and Mills um, from Doris in the Dealer, which is another awesome podcast, um, what they said was, Joel, when when we meet our partner for the first time, we have 25% of the same values in common. That's it. So, you know, we might like, we might have met at a bar. So drinking's in common or dancing or maybe you met at a party or something like that. And then over time, as the years go on, 50% of our values become the same because we start to do exactly what um, Mrs. Cardone did. You know, she started to give up things that she loved. She started to give up the shooting. She started to give up the socialising. And then over time even more, it becomes 75% of the same values. We both start to give up things that we used to love to do on our own and now it's gone and we, that's why we start to change and we are not the person that we used to be because we've, we've let go of the things that were important to us And then all of a sudden we become 100% with the same values. We pretty much become the same person. And guess what happens when that happens? Split. That's where divorce comes from because now you're boring. You're basically living with yourself. And um, you've both given up so much that you've got so much resentment and regret towards the other person that you just, you just, you leave, you quit and you're out of there. And that's why we... We're at the 50% mark with divorces and people separating, but I actually think it's way higher than that because a lot of people aren't married and are still splitting up. Um, But you've got, it's so important what you said, Joel, that we have to keep some of those things that are important to us individually. Like I love playing basketball. Tom doesn't like playing basketball. I love um, rollerblading. He doesn't love rollerblading, but he loves riding his bike and taking the kids to school on his bike. That's great. He can go and do that. He loves to go out and have a drink with the boys. And I like to go out and sometimes catch up with the girls. So, you know, you've got to keep those things um, that you love to do in your life. Please don't give them up because that's what makes you, you. And that's what brings joy to your life as well. Outstanding. Wow, this is a cracker. I like share this one around, guys. This one's going to be helpful. If if you are listening to this and you're feeling this is like hitting you in the throat or in the heart, you're feeling like discomfort, like just, just be kind to yourself and check in and ask why, you know, 
there's people out there that'll help you get through this um, and it doesn't have to end in disaster. It doesn't have to end in a split. It doesn't have to end in anything. And, you know, as much as we were sort of picking on the blokes here, uh, the, there's plenty of women out there that know how to manipulate the opposite way as well and be very unsupportive as well. So um, I'm super, super blessed. Like you could see, like there'd be times where there'd be women out there that wouldn't like um, their husband being heavily involved in network marketing, being around powerful women all the time, you know, and Vicky's just gone, rolled her sleeves up and jumped in too, which is, which is outstanding. But like, guys, like support your partner. You know, that's what you, that's what you said on the day you said I do. And if you haven't said that you, you've made a commitment somewhere along the line. Uh, so keep it. They deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve the best relationship that you can possibly have. And anything less than a masterpiece is not good enough. So that takes work. So do the work. It's not that, it's not that complicated. It's not easy, but it's not complicated either. Cool. I love well, it. Christine, I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. That's it. That's a wrap. Microphone drop. I think we hit, hit all the um, tough points today and um, I'm hoping our listeners enjoyed that one. I know, it, I know it's hard to hear some of this because when you're living in this situation, it, it is really hard to see what's going on. You're only seeing what you want to see. Um, but, yeah, just, just what, what we want, we just want you to live a more passionate and inspired life. That's what we want for you guys. And um, we don't want you to be the 98% that die with the dream still in you. I want you to go out there and live your best life. So thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Damn. Uh. Yeah.